The text for this sermon is from Lamentations 2.19. Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Welcome to Spurgeon's Sermons. If you find this sermon uplifting, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Here you'll be able to find sermons by the man known as the Prince of Preachers. And once you've subscribed, hit the bell icon so you'll get notified whenever we post new videos. We hope and pray that God will bless you richly as you engage with his word through the preaching of Charles Spurgeon. This was originally spoken to Zion, when in her sad and desolate condition. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, had wept his eyes dry for the slain of the daughter of his people, and when he had done all he could himself to pour out tears for poor Jerusalem, he then begged Jerusalem to weep for herself. Methinks I might become a Jeremy tonight, and weep as he, for surely the church at large is in almost as evil a condition. O Zion, how hast thou been veiled in a cloud, and how is thy honour trodden in the dust? Arise, ye sons of Zion, and weep for your mother, yea weep bitterly, for she hath given herself to other lovers, and forsaken the Lord that bought her. I bear witness this night, in the midst of this solemn assembly, that the church at large is wickedly departing from the living God, she is leaving the truth which was once her glory, and she is mixing herself among the nations. Ah! Beloved, it were well if Zion now could sometimes weep, it were well if there were more who would lay to heart the wound of the daughter of his people. How hath the city become a harlot? How hath the much fine gold become dim? And how hath the glory departed? Zion is under a cloud. Her ministers preach not with the energy and fire that anciently dwelt in the lips of God's servants, neither is pure and undefiled doctrine proclaimed in her streets. Where are her evangelists who with earnest hearts traverse the land with the gospel on their lips? Where are her apostolic preachers who everywhere declared the good tidings of salvation? Alas for the idle shepherds! Alas for the slumbering ministers! Weep sore, O Zion! Weep thee sore, until another reformation comes to sweep thy floor. Weep thee, Zion, weep until he shall come whose fan is in his hand, who shall thoroughly purge his floor, for the time is coming when judgment must begin at the house of God. Oh, that now the princes of Israel had wisdom, that they might seek the Lord, but alas, our leaders have given themselves to false doctrine, neither do they love the thing which is right. Therefore I charge thee, arise, O Zion, cry out in the night in the beginning of the watches pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. We leave Zion, however, to speak to those who need exhortation more than Zion does, to speak to those who are Zion's enemies, or followers of Zion, and yet not belonging to her ranks. To them we shall have a word or two to say tonight. First, from our text we gather, that it is never too soon to pray. Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. You are lying on your bed, the gracious spirit whispers, arise, and pray to God. Well, there is no reason why you should delay till the morning light, in the beginning of the watches pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. We are told here that it is never too soon to pray. How many young persons imagine that religion is a thing for age, or at least for maturity, but they conceive that whilst they are in the bloom of their youth, they need not attend to its admonitions. How many have we found who count religion to be a crutch for old age, who reckon it an ornament to their grey hairs, forgetting that to the young man religion is like a chain of gold around his neck, and like an ornament set with precious jewels, that shall array him with honour? How many there be who think it is yet too soon for them to bear for a single moment the cross of Jesus? They do not want to have their young shoulders galled with an early burden, they do not think it is true that it is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth, and they forget that that yoke is easy, and that burden is light. Therefore, hour after hour, and day after day, the malicious fiend whispers in their ear, it is too soon, it is too soon. Postpone, postpone, postpone. Procrastinate. Need we tell you once more that off-repeated axiom, procrastination is the thief of time? Need we remind you that delays are dangerous? Need we tell you that those are the workings of Satan? For the Holy Ghost, when he strives with man, says, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. It is never beloved, too soon to pray. Art thou a child tonight? Thy God heareth children. He called Samuel when he was but a child. Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here am I. We have had our Josiahs, we have heard of our Timothys, we have seen those in early youth who have been brought to the Saviour. Oh! Remember it is not too soon to seek the Saviour, ere you arrive at manhood. 
If God in his mercy calls you to him, I beseech you think not for a moment that he will not hear you. I trust one know his name, yeah, more than that, I know I do. I know whom I have believed. But he did not call me too early. Though but a child, I descended into the pool of baptism, there to be buried with my Saviour. Oh! I wish I could say that all those fourteen or fifteen years of my life had not been thrown away. Blessed be his name, he never calls us too soon. If he rises early in the morning, and sends some into his vineyard to labor, he does not send them before they should go, before there is work for them to do. Young man, it is not too soon. Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Again, it is not too late to cry to the Lord, for if the sun be set, and the watches of the night have commenced their round, the mercy seat is open. No shop is open so late as the house of mercy. The devil has two tricks with men. Sometimes he puts their clock a little backward, and he says, stop, there is time enough yet, and when that does not answer, he turns the hands on, and he cries out, too late. Too late. Old man, has the devil said, it is too late? Convinced sinner, has Satan said, it is too late? Troubled, distressed one, has the thought risen in thy soul, a bitter and a dark one, it is too late? It is not. Within another fifteen minutes another year shall have come, but if the Spirit of God calls you this year, he will not call you too late in the year. If to the last second you should live, if God the Holy Ghost calls you then, he will not have called you too late. Ah! Ye desponding ones, who think it is all too late, it is not. While the lamp holds out to burn. The vilest sinner that returns. Shall find mercy and peace. There have been some older than you can be, some are sinful and vile, and heinously wicked, who have provoked God as much, who have sinned against him as frequently, and yet they have found pardon. If he call thee, sinner, if he call thee tonight, twelve o'clock is not too late, as one o'clock is not too early. If he call thee, whether it be at midnight, or cockcrowing, or noonday, we would say to thee, as they did to the blind man, arise, he calleth thee. And as sure as ever he calls you, he will not send you away without a blessing. It is not too late to call on God. The darkness of night is gathering, it is coming on, and you are near to death. Arise, sleeper, arise. Thou who art now taking the last nap of death. Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Next, we cannot pray too vehemently, for the text says, Arise, cry out in the night. God loves earnest prayers. He loves impetuous prayers, vehement prayers. Let a man preach if he dare coldly and slowly, but never let him pray so. God loveth crying out prayers. There is a poor fellow who says, I don't know how to pray. Why, sir, he says, I could not put six or seven words together in English grammar. Tush upon English grammar. God does not care for that, so long as you pour out your heart. That is enough. Cry out before him. Ah, says one, I have been supplicating to God. I think I have asked for mercy. But perhaps you have not cried out. Cry out before God. I have often heard men say they have prayed and have not been heard. But I have known the reason. They have asked amiss if they have asked, and those who cry with weak voices, who do not cry aloud, must not expect to get a blessing. When you go to mercy's gate, let me give you a little advice. Do not go and give a gentle tap, like a lady, do not give a single knock, like a beggar, but take the knocker and rap hard, till the very door seems to shake. Rap with all your might. And recollect that God loveth those who knock hard at mercy's gate. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. I picture that scene at midnight, which our Saviour mentioned in the parable, and it will suit the present occasion. A certain man wanted some bread, a friend of his on a journey had come to his house and was very faint, and needed bread to eat. So off he went to his next door neighbour and rapped at his door, but no one came. He stood beneath the window and called out his friend's name. His friend answered from the top of the house, where he had been lying asleep, my wife and children are with me in bed, and I cannot rise and give thee. But the man did not care about that. His poor friend wanted bread, so he called out aloud, it is bread I want, and bread I must have. I fancy I see the man lying and sleeping there. He says, I shan't get up, it is very cold tonight. How can you expect me to rise and go downstairs to get bread for you? I won't, I can't, I shan't. 
so he wraps himself very comfortably again and lays down to sleep once more. What does the man down below do? Oh. I hear him still. Awake, sir. I must have it. I will have it. My friend is starving. Go home, you fellow. Don't disturb me this time of night. I must have bread. Why don't you come and let me have it? Says the other, but the friend vexed and angry lies down again on his bed. Still at the door there comes a heavier and a heavier rap, and the man still shouts, Bread, sir, bread. You will not sleep all night till you come down and give it me. And verily I say unto you, though he will not rise and give it to him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as much as he needeth. Arise, cry out in the night, and God will hear you, if you cry out with all your souls, and pour out your hearts before him. And now our last remark is, we cannot pray too simply. Just hear how the psalmist has it, pour out your hearts before him. Not pour out your fine words, not pour out your beautiful periods, but pour out your hearts. I dare not, says one, there is black stuff in my heart. Out with it then, it is better out than in. I cannot, says another, it would not run freely. Pour it out, sir, pour it all out, like water. Do you not notice something in this? Some men say, I cannot pray as I could wish, my crying out is a feeble one. Well, when you pour out water it does not make much noise. So you can pour out your heart like water, and it will run away and you can scarcely know it. There is many a prayer uttered in a garret that nobody has heard, but stop. Gabriel heard it, God himself heard it. There is many a cry down in a cellar, or up in a garret, or some lonely place where the cobbler sits mending his shoes beneath a window, which the world does not hear, but the Lord hears it. Pour out your heart like water. How does water run out? The quickest way it can, that's all. It never stops much about how it runs. That is the way the Lord loves to have it. Some of your gentry offer prayers which are poured out drop after drop, and must be brought to a grand, ecclesiastical, prayer book shape. Now, take your heart and pour it out like water. What, says one, with all the oaths in it? Yes. With all my old sins in it? Yes. Pour out your heart like water, pour it out by confessing all your sins, pour it out by begging the Lord to have mercy upon you for Christ's sake, pour it out like water. And when it is all poured out, he will come and fill it again with wines on the lees, well refined. Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Thus do I speak to all who will acknowledge themselves to be sinners in the sight of God, but even these must have the assistance of the Holy Spirit to enable them to cry out, O my Lord, grant it. And now, dear friends, may grace be given unto you, that ye may be able to pour out your hearts this night. Remember, my hearers, it may seem a light thing for us to assemble tonight at such an hour, but listen for one moment to the ticking of that clock. Here the preacher paused, and amid solemn silence every one heard the clock with its tick, tick, tick. It is the beating of the pulse of eternity. You hear the ticking of that clock, it is the footstep of death pursuing you. Each time the clock ticks, death's footsteps are falling on the ground close behind you. You will soon enter another year. This year will have gone in a few seconds. 1855 is almost gone, where will the next year be spent, my friends? One has been spent on earth, where will you spend the next? In heaven, says one, I trust. Another murmurs, perhaps I shall spend mine in hell. Ah! Solemn is the thought, but before that clock strikes twelve, some here may be in hell, and, blessed be the name of God. Some of us may be in heaven. But oh, do you know how to estimate your time, my hearers? Do you know how to measure your days? Oh! I have not words to speak tonight. Do you know that every hour you are nearing the tomb? That every hour you are nearing judgment? That the archangel is flapping his wings every second of your life, and, trumpet at his mouth, is approaching you? That you do not live stationary lives, but always going on, 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 towards the grave? Do you know where the stream of life is hastening some of you? To the rapids, to the rapids of woe and destruction. What shall the end of those be who obey not the gospel of God? Ye will not have so many years to live as ye had last year. See the man who has but a few shillings in his pocket, how he takes them out and spends them one by one. Now he has but a few coppers, and there is so much for that tiny candle, so much for that piece of bread. 
he counts the articles out one by one, and so the money goes gradually from his pocket. Oh. If you knew how poor you are some of you. You think there is no bottom to your pockets, you think you have a boundless store of time, but you have not. As the Lord liveth, there is a young man here that has not more than one year to live, and yet he is spending all that he is worth of time, in sin, in folly, and vice. Some of you have not that to live, and yet how are you spending your time? Oh take care. Take care. Time is precious. And whenever we have little of it, it is more precious, yea, it is most precious. May God help you to escape from hell and fly to heaven. I feel like the angel, tonight, who put his hand upon Lot, and cried, Escape. Look not behind thee. Stay not in all the plain, flee to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And now, I appreciate the power of silence. You will please to observe strict and solemn silence until the striking of that clock, and let each one spend the time as he pleases. It was now two minutes to twelve, and profound silence reigned, save where sobs and groans could be distinctly heard from penitent lips seeking the Saviour. The clock having struck, Mr. Spurgeon continued Happy Smiley you are now where you never were before, and you never will be again where you have been tonight. Now we have had a solemn meeting, and let us have a cheerful ending of it. As we go away let us sing a sweet hymn to encourage our hearts. A hymn was then sung. Now may the Lord bless you, and lift up the light of his countenance upon you, and give you peace. May you, during this year of grace, receive much grace, and may you proceed onwards towards heaven. And may we as a church, as members of churches, as ministers, as deacons, mutually strive together for the faith of Jesus, and be edified therein. And may the Lord save the ungodly. If the last year is clean gone and they are not yet pardoned and forgiven, let not another year roll away without their finding mercy. The Lord dismiss you all with his sweet blessing, for his blessed Son's sake, Amen. And may the love of Jesus Christ, the grace of his Father, and the fellowship of his blessed Spirit be yours, my beloved, if ye know Christ, world without end. Amen. Now, my friends, in the highest and best sense, I wish you all a happy new year. Thank you for listening to this sermon by Charles Spurgeon. This YouTube channel exists to help thousands of people like you encounter God through Spurgeon's preaching. You can discover more about the man known as the Prince of Preachers by clicking the links in the description below. Subscribe to this channel to dive deeper into the treasury of Spurgeon's preaching, and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever we post sermons and content written by Charles Spurgeon.